Hey guys, I am super excited because we just bought a brand new Land Rover Defender. Uh, no, not this one. That one is 75000 We were going to buy a Bronco, but as you know, the Bronco is not available yet because, well, it won't be out till next summer. That one, no, $75,000, 76000 uh, Not this one. That one's also 76000 And good golly, certainly not this one. <laughs> this one is 85000 Let me show you what we bought because we bought the cheapest brand new Land Rover for sale in North America. And the reason we did that is because, you know, it's an off-roader. It's not something that we're going to be taking to the mall and back. It's something that we're going to be taking to Moab and back. So let me introduce you now to our new TFL long-term Land Rover Defender. Yep, it's white because that is the base color. Yep, it's got steelies because, well, they're cool. In this video, we're going to show you the difference between this one and the other ones. And I'll need my friend and son, Tommy, to help me do that. All right, check it out. Here it is, the 2020 Land Rover Defender 110. Now this model has a base MSRP of just under $50,000. Ours, as you see equipped, $55,000. But don't think we simply came to a Land Rover dealership, handed them a check, and drove one off the lot. We actually ordered this model specifically back in June, and let's see how it compares to its much more expensive brother. If you're in the market for a sweet pair of headphones, check out this pair from Cove. I've been using these to edit TFL videos for about a month, and the Bluetooth works from 30 feet away. That way, you can even flip on the noise canceling and tune out while you're working in the garage. They're super comfortable, and a charge lasts up to 12 hours, which means you can fold them up, toss them in their included bag, and take your music anywhere. Plus, if you get a call while wearing them, the built-in mic won't miss a beat. Here's something cool. With noise canceling on, they're quiet from the outside until you open them up. Usually these headphones are $199, but use the code FAST68 and get over 67% off of them. And that's the best deal you're going to find on noise canceling headphones anytime soon. And the reviews speak for themselves. For more information, click the link in the description below. You see, the typical Defender 110 you might find on a dealership lot will probably cost somewhere between $75,000, maybe $85,000. We found one out east in stock for about $64,000, but we wanted something much more affordable than that. So we custom ordered one, and well, it's much cheaper than your average Defender, but you also get a lot less. How much less? Well, we're gonna find out right now because I'm gonna compare that Defender 110 to this Defender X, which comes in at 86 grand. You see, the goal of this Defender was to buy the stripped down off-road model. So, we really didn't get a lot of options that you might typically find on a Defender. You can see the options list, very short. Starting price, 49.9. MSRP on this one, 55.9. Now this Defender X not only has a lot of differences on the outside, but the inside as well. And you can see this MSRP comes in at 86,385, but this is by no means the most expensive you can get. In fact, on the build and price configurator last night, I built one to $111,000, which means that in theory, you can get a Defender that costs twice as much as our base white one. Now the front of the Defenders look pretty similar, but there are some key differences, starting with the headlights. Now this of course is the expensive model and you can see that when you drive along there's this LED ring that extends around the circumference of the headlight. That's kind of the signature Defender pattern. On the base model Defender, still LED beams, but you don't have that cool surround for the LED. It's just these two little lights that illuminate when you go down the road. And then beneath the headlights you'll notice that the Defender X here has fog lights. Our base Defender no fog lights, just a plastic cubby here. And then the actual finish is different as well. So this X has this really cool satin chrome. Ours just has this plain silver. Pretty much every Defender you're gonna find out in a dealership or even on the road is gonna have a three liter straight six. It makes 395 horsepower, it's supercharged, and it's a mild hybrid. It's a pretty high-tech engine. But of course, our affordable Defender 
doesn't have the straight six. We actually opted for the base engine, which apparently is pretty rare. This is a two liter four cylinder turbo, the Ingenium engine. They use this engine in many Land Rover Jaguar products. It makes 296 horsepower, so 100 less horsepower. But here's the deal, it's much more affordable, several thousand dollars less. It's also much less complex, so there's no mild hybrid system on this, just a turbo and a four cylinder versus all the crazy voltage going through this straight six. There are a couple of reasons we went with the four cylinder engine. Despite it being much more affordable, it's also much lighter than the six cylinder, which is what you want for off-roading. It's proven itself to be pretty darn reliable. The two liter's been around for a long time, but the best part of the four cylinder is you can spec it with these amazing 18 inch steel wheels, which aren't available on the six cylinder Defenders. Not only do they look brilliant, but they're also smaller, which is what you want for off-roading, so you could put a nice big sidewall on them. They're pretty durable, and I mean, they're just awesome. You can't get the 110 with a six cylinder in the steel wheels. I've heard it's because the brakes are too big on the upgraded engine. So small engine, lighter, reliable, and amazing wheels, win-win. Now the inside of this brand new Defender can be super luxurious. This one's 86 grand, but it really is nice, starting with these leather seats. They're so soft, very sumptuous. They're also completely power adjustable, 14 way. So this is something you'd expect in like a Range Rover. The interior of our Defender is still very nice, but much more basic and utilitarian. You'll notice cloth seats here and they're manually adjustable. So you slide them forward with a big lever here. You raise them up and down with a lever, but you do get to recline them using a little switch. So at least a little bit of power adjustments. When you step into the X, the first thing that you notice is the giant leather wrapped steering wheel with the full digital gauges. They're configurable, so right now I've got my speed, my tachometer, and my navigation all displayed right there in the middle. Now when you come into the four cylinder Defender, start it up here, still a push button start, you still have a leather wrapped steering wheel, but I no longer have the button for the heated steering wheel because we don't have a heated steering wheel. Actually, you can kind of see the outline of where it would be, but it doesn't do anything when you click it. And then the gauges are pretty cool, actually. They're half digital, they're half analog. I kind of like these more. I like how, for example, on the tachometer, it blends from digital up into analog. Isn't that cool? So we didn't get the full digital gauge cluster, but I'm kind of glad we didn't because this semi-digital is actually really cool looking. The center console of the Defender X is really luxurious. You've got this full padded leather armrest with a cool box here in the center. This is actually a cooler wireless charging here. You've got some cubbies up top. You also have this wood accent trim. This is very luxurious. Our Defender doesn't have that really rad cool box in the center or the wood trim because instead we have a seat. Check that out. We actually optioned this Defender with six seats in it. Three abreast in the front, three abreast in the rear. This was one of the few options we got just because it's so rad. What other SUVs now in 2020 can you option with three abreast seating in the front? But of course you can fold it down and have that center armrest when not in use. But because we got this center mounted seat, we actually had to get one other option, which is the digital mirror here and that's because uh, they make you option this. I think it's a safety thing if someone's sitting here in the center as a driver you're not going to have a lot of visibility out the back. Here in the center the Defenders are pretty similar but this Defender X does have a couple options that we don't such as heated seats and actually cooled seats all through these knobs here in the middle. We don't have any of that. Take a look. Now here in the center of the Defender we don't have the heated seats. You can push in on the knobs but nothing happens. We also don't have cooled seats. What we do have, however, is all the off-road gear, including terrain response too. So I can select all these different programs for rock crawl, sand, gravel, and snow. This was an option because if you take a look at the Monroney, we got the advanced off-road capability package, which includes all terrain progress control, basically off-road cruise control, terrain response too, and configurable terrain response. And we also got the electronic active differential, which is a proper rear locking diff. So we got pretty much every off-road goodie we could on this Defender. The back seat of the Defender X is just as luxurious as the front. Of course, it's covered in leather, but take a look at this. I have climate zones back here as well. I can adjust them from the feet to the face. It's all automatic, very cool stuff. In the back seat of our Defender, you'll notice no more climate controls. We just have a couple of vents but that's not such a bad thing. And take a look at this. We still have the USB ports and the power outlets for the second row. So 
that's a nice function. Oh, also, one other thing, with the cloth seats, you don't have pockets in the back of the seats. What the heck? How funky is that? The Defender is available with a couple of roof options, including this full glass panoramic sunroof, how nice is that? And even a fabric top. Our Defender doesn't have the sunroof or the fabric top. Instead, we just have more headliner. Uh, but it is funny, you can actually see the big cutout where the sunroof would go. It's like it sits there and mocks you for not getting it. Here in the back of the Defender 110X, big old trunk back here, it's got this really cool lining on it. You'll also notice, look, three prong power outlet. And check this out, a little button down here to lower the air suspension to make loading and unloading just a little bit easier. Here in the back of our Defender, it's actually a pretty similar setup. We actually have the all-weather mats, which is a big win, but you'll see like the tread pattern is still the same here on the floor and also on the back of the seats. We don't have the power outlet, but that's okay. I mean, I think this is still a very usable trunk and take a look at this. They both have the really cool Alpine windows that come standard just to let a little bit of extra light in. Oh, and one other thing, take a look at this. We still have air suspension because all Defender 110s in the US come standard with air suspension. So I can still lower and raise the vehicle for off-roading as well as for loading and unloading. All right, there's one or two other options we did opt for. We got the towing package with the full hitch here. You'll see you have seven and four pin connectors as well. And we also got Sirius XM radio for 300 or so dollars because my dad likes his Sirius XM53 chill. Now you'll notice on the hood here, we have this fake diamond plating, which our videographer calls burgers. They do look like burgers. <laughs> That's so funny. Here on the Defender X, the burgers are actually shiny. Take a look at that. And it's not the only shiny thing you get on the Defender X. This one has a painted black hood. Ours, of course, is just normal white. This one also has shiny pedals. Ours just has normal black pedals. And there's a couple of other funny options that you get on the Defender X that you don't get on the 110, such as cabin air ionizers. You also have, you know, power adjustable steering wheel. We have a manually adjustable steering wheel. So a ton of little things we didn't get, but hey, when you're out in the desert, none of that really matters. The keen-eyed viewers of you out there may notice we are missing a couple of off-road options. First of all, the off-road tire package. Now these are the off-road tires we purchased, the Goodyear Wranglers, but they're not the full Duratrac and we're going to change up the tires anyways to something much more aggressive. We also had initially optioned the Explorer package, which gave you the roof rack and the snorkel and the push bar, and we were really excited about it, but it was like $8,000, and in terms of all-out capability doesn't add a whole lot. It's mostly visual, so we didn't get that. So we ended up with a $55,000 Defender. Now, these two are actually really cool spec. They're here right now in stock at Flatiron's Land Rover in Broomfield, Colorado. If you're interested, be sure to ask for Mark because he's a real enthusiast and he'll hook you up. So Tommy, there's a uh, 30,000 difference between the base, cheapest Land Rover in America, and of course the X, right? Yep. Basically the price of an entry-level Wrangler. Yeah, pretty much. But there are two things I do miss that I wish we had on ours. Can I show you? Yeah, show me. Okay, come on, come on with me. I love these uh, smoke taillights. Yeah, they're clear. They're really nice. They're really nice. And this, Tommy. Yeah, what the heck? Why are these only on the X? These yeah. exposed tow hooks. Yeah, we need uh, these. We need these big time. So Tommy, there's of course one question we didn't answer and that is how does the uh, base Defender drive? Well check out TFL now, we're going to have a video up there, all of our driving impressions on the affordable Land Rover. We keep calling it the cheapest, someone's going to be like, well I bought one for 54 so let's be careful about that. But it's such a cool looking rig and compared to just about every other Defender, it's so much more affordable. Yeah and uh, we'll get into full driving impressions, I just want to get behind the wheel and in that video tell you what it's like to actually drive a brand new Defender for the first time. As always, this is Roman. Yep, and Tommy, check out TFL Car and TFLTruck.com for the latest and greatest in new car and truck reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.